Hello, and welcome to the Jam Bar in 10. I'm Matt Sotler. And I'm Josh Robison. The Communications Department is set to move from Williamson College of Business Administration to Beagley College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences. Jam Bar reporter Matt Sotler has more. For faculty and students in the Communications Department, the recent decision to transfer from WCBA to Beagley may seem rather confusing. Beagley Dean Charles Howell said the department move will not affect any current students, faculty, or courses offered by communications. We've only had very preliminary discussions, but I don't believe it's going to be a difficult transition at all. They're staying in their present quarters. Uh, they have access to their uh, specialized classrooms and specialized equipment, and so there will be no physical move. They will just join us uh, uh, organizationally. They will be a fifth department in our uh, college and they will participate in all college activities. While the move is still in its early stages, Howell said he was actively working with the communications department for a smooth transition. Yeah, I went over there and had a conversation with their faculty. It was really interesting and uh, pretty soon I'm going to go over there and have a tour of their facilities and uh, uh, it was, uh, we, we've, I've discussed it with the Dean's Advisory Council and there were a number of uh, good suggestions for helping us uh, get integrated. For example, some uh, social activities that would involve the whole college so with its new participants. And so it's, uh, you know, we haven't had any hiccups yet. Uh, the Communications Department is expected to join Beagley on July 1st, 2025. Reporting for the Jam Bar, I'm Matt Soller. Handling finances can be challenging for some college students. According to Elton Bryson Stevens Company, 40% of college students are not equipped with adequate financial literary knowledge and skills. Nicholas Bianco and Sidney Fairbanks took a look at ways to combat this. Handling finances can be challenging for some college students. According to EBSCO, 40% of college students are not equipped with adequate financial literacy knowledge and skills. YSU includes general education financial courses to provide students with tips on how to better handle finances. Senior lecturer of economics, Sarah Jenick, said an introduction in personal financial literacy is a course she teaches that takes students on a financial journey. We cover everything from buying a car, financing a car, to buying a home, the mortgage process, once you start your career, how you budget um, for a household, just either for yourself or if you have a family, the things you need to consider there, all the way through to retirement savings. Lecturer Connie Augustine said playing your financial future is a general education course that teaches students the fundamentals of finances. We cover just a little bit of everything. You know, what's, what's life insurance? What's, um, what are credit cards and how should you use them to your advantage? Because you shouldn't just completely ignore them. You have to think about your credit score, but what does that mean and how can you use that to purposely build a solid credit rating and just a lot of people don't understand it so i think it's a great course for life financial literacy professors implement projects and assignments in their courses to give students examples and tips on how, on how to handle finances Genix says stock market project is using their courses to give students the investing experience but it's fun for students to Kind of start that um, they get to choose whatever stocks they want to invest in um, and then we see where they end up you know a couple weeks later what student ended up with the highest returns. Jenik explained an investing technique that could benefit students financially. If you start saving when you are 25 and just put $200 away in um, a retirement account that's tied to like the stock market um, annual stock returns maybe around 10 percent per year per average by the time you retire at age 65, you will have a million dollars. Jenny said consistently saving at a young age will likely increase the chances of being better off financially. For Jane Barn 10, I'm Nicholas Bianco. Youngstown State is always expanding and evolving, especially in athletics. The women's lacrosse team is one of the newest sports to join YSU's athletics repertoire. Jam Bar contributor Dylan Lux has more in their inception. Lacrosse was added to YSU's existing sports in 2021 with its first season at the Division I level in the Mid-American Conference, where it's played since. Ron Strollo, YSU Athletic Director, said the process for adding lacrosse came from evaluating what sports were growing in popularity at the local level. Although it's growing in the state of Ohio, it allows us 
uh, to recruit kids from kind of outside the area that wouldn't necessarily wouldn't come to Youngstown State unless it was or the fact that we're sponsoring lacrosse. Serlo also said athletics looks at different clubs throughout the area to see where the region's interests lie. Some of it, you know, it, it begins with trying to get a sense of kind of our students and our region's needs and interests. You know, so I think we always try to take a peek at what club sports are out there. The men's lacrosse club competes against regional schools such as Akron, the University of Finley, and Pitt. According to YSU's website, the team strives to compete at a high level and grow their members into well-rounded players. The program emphasizes that being a competitive team requires putting the best players on the field. Strollo also highlighted the campus's welcoming community as a key to drawing in potential coaches and students. It's not only the, you know, the facilities, but the people. Um, you know, I think it's, you know, if you talk to our coaches, they've all enjoyed living here. Uh, they've all enjoyed working on campus you know, with the faculty and the staff. Um, you know, it kind of starts with the people and the people in our department. Strollo said the program receives funding through its gender equity plan, and a portion of students' tuition and fees. For Jambar TV, I'm Dylan Lux. That's all we have for news. Let's take it over to Desiah Howard with our sports update. Thanks, Matt. Always a pleasure. Across a slate of five games, the YSU women's volleyball team tallied a 1-4 record against Horizon League foes. On October 18th and 19th, the Gwens took on IU Indy in a doubleheader and came out at a 1-1 record following a 3-1 victory over the Jaguars in the first of two games. Game two ended in a 3-2 victory for the IU Indy. The following weekend, YSU traveled to Milwaukee for a matchup with the Panthers. The Gwens lost in straight sets in back-to-back -back matches in Wisconsin before returning home to the Beagley Center on October 29th. YSU took on the Colonials of Robert Morris in a singles game matchup. RMU won in straight sets, moving the Penguins to 1-11 in conference play. Women's Volleyball will be back in action on the 1st of November against Oakland University inside the Beagley Center. The doubleheader will begin at 6 p.m. and will be broadcast live on ESPN+. The YSU men's tennis team returns from the Viking Invitational on October 28th. In singles, true freshman Matteo Saradelli finished in quarterfinals of singles play. Senior Chester Wickwire finished the tournament with a record of 2-1. Saradelli and Wickwire in doubles play finished the tournament with a 1-1 record. This tournament concluded the Penguins fall season, but they will return in January. The Youngstown State University football team hosted the number 7 ranked University of North Dakota football team over the weekend. I'll give you more of an inside scoop how the game, how the game went. Against the ranked opponent, it goes without question that the Penguins had to be on point. Fortunately for YSU, the Penguins won by a point in a 41-40 shootout. The Penguins went with a ground-and-pound offense as sophomore quarterback Bo Brungard led the rushing attack with 176 yards. Brungard tallied four total touchdowns in the matchup and set the YSU single-season rushing record by a quarterback with 777 yards on 109 carries. Brungard's gameplay over the weekend named him Missouri Valley Football Conference Offensive Player of the Week. Brungard said in order to win it all, all phases of the game are imperative. Coach talks about all the time just putting together every phase of the game for 60 minutes. And, uh, and you know, tonight we went 60-plus, but um, this is what this team can do um, when we put all three phases of football together for the whole game. And um, I couldn't be more proud of every single one of my guys in the team. Brungard was the face of the Penguins' run game, but had supporting details in running backs Tyshawn King and Ethan Wright. Head coach Doug Phillips is a firm believer of the run game, playing a factor in football games. Phillips said a successful second-half rushing attack is linked to a successful end-of-game result. The team that comes out in the second half and is able to run the football, it's going to be the team that gets what their work deserves. And I thought us being able to run the football, you know, their quarterback was almost perfect that first half, you know, third down plays, 11 of 12 passing. But I still believe stopping the run, us being able to run the football, that was going to determine the outcome of the game. And I think you saw it. I mean, there was drives we didn't throw the ball. The YSU football team will spend back-to-back -back weeks in Illinois for matchups against Illinois State University and Southern Illinois University. Kickoff against Illinois State is set for 3 p.m. To stay updated on the team and their matchups, visit YSUsports.com. And as always, for the Jam Bar, I'm Taziah Howard. I would say Happy Halloween, but next time I'll be saying Happy Holidays. Matt, Josh, let's kick it back to you guys. Thanks, Taziah.
Thank you all for watching this week's Jambar in 10. I'm Josh Robison. And I'm Matt Sautler. We'll see you here next week.